Hi, I'm Kate Nash and this is Records in My Life. so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. We understand your record just came out recently. Can it you tell does. us a bit about it? It's called Yesterday Was Forever. Um, I made it over a period of four years and I released it by Kickstarter. That's what funded the record. And uh, yeah, I'm, it's a 14, 14 track record and I think it's been a long time coming and I'm really excited about it being, being out. And who else was, was there? Anybody else involved um, making the record? Did there you was it? two producers that I worked with primarily: um, Frederick Toe and Jared Christine, and then a couple of other people. Um, I, Asia Whitaker, I did Body Heat with, and uh, Julia Michaels, I did Hate You with, and yeah, but because it was just like over such a long period of time, it wasn't like sit down in the studio and make one record with one person and I actually really liked I mean I didn't like the feeling of not being able to release something but I really like the final product of like you know collaborating with a few different people uh, aside from being a successful singer songwriter you're also a successful actress on film and television um yeah. tell us a bit about and you and, and glow for yes people that don't know glow um, on Netflix yeah yeah great show and great soundtrack tell us about a couple of yeah. bands um on the soundtrack Oh my goodness, well, there's a lot of 80s music, a lot of 80s pop moments happening. And some kind of like, I mean, some of the moments are just so perfect. You know, when um, Justine and uh, Billy, uh, he's coming to deliver her pizza and he's like walking slow-mo to mm. the, the hotel room. That's one of my favorite moments. Actually, both are with Britt Barron because my other favorite moment musically is when Mark Maron's listening to um, like magic moments in the bedroom lying like playing a record and then he tries to kiss her and it's really weird but it's it like the music the music department did such an incredible job and let's go back you're very influenced by punk as well yes give us a couple of albums i know um i guess the record that really changed my life with punk music was this a single compilation by the buzzcocks it was singles going steady and i just knew that cover so well it was like a famous cover that i'd like the artwork i mean i'd seen it so much as a teenager and then i just went to hmv and like bought it because i was like i should know this i just don't know what it is but i see the record cover all the time and that really blew my mind because I think before that I'd always been trying to write songs in this kind of poetic way that didn't feel like me and I couldn't find my voice and when I listened when I just put that record on I was like oh my god you can just be yourself and they just told these really simple they made these like really simple pop songs essentially that were like stories I could relate to and a a voice that I felt I could have myself you know it was just a very down to earth and very mundane um and so I was really attracted to that so then I got into the adverts um I mean the clash is always like for me like going back to like so many clash albums that I love that like I think have that I mean I always feel like I relate so much to the British punk more so than American just because it's like where I'm from I think but there's like any of those like early Clash albums that um, I love the production on those records I think the Clash were really unique with their experimentation um, because they kind of you know you listen to some of those songs and the production's really weird it's really it's not straight down the line it's not um just punk music they started out being like we're a punk band and then they really experimented with sound in a way that i think a lot of bands didn't like there's a thing with like um that happens with like punk and rock music where it has to stay in its lane and otherwise you're a sellout if you you know try anything new but what i love about the clash is they just didn't listen to any of that and they just they were inspired by different types of music and they tried like different things so um I, i recommend any of those like early clash records i mean any clash album I would say. 
we like to pride ourselves on educating people about music. That's cool. what the show's all about. So can you give us a record that you've just discovered? Oh. It can be a new release, an old release yeah. that we should be listening well, to. maybe one that I rediscovered because I used to listen to this album as a child, like in the back of the car. Um, my parents would always play it. Is that cool? Yeah. Sirens. It adds. It adds. Uh, it adds. Cinema drama. Very tame. Yeah. It's all going down here at the Imperial Theater. Uh, um, I'm going to be. I'm, be I'm arrested. reporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kate Nash live at the Imperial. That's right. Um, so, uh, live at the point by Christy Moore. I think it's like 1984. That record came out, and it's like live, it's his live show at the point. Um, and my mum and dad used to listen to that all the time when I was a kid in the car, either like driving to Newcastle to visit my granny or driving around Ireland and visiting family on summer holiday. And I was kind of, I love, I mean, I, I had a love for the songs because of the familiarity, but I also would be like, oh, why can't we listen to our music now? And I wanted to listen to like Celine Dion or whatever. And I've been revisiting Irish traditional music um, for my next album that I've been working on already I guess because this album took so long to make I started working on different projects and I realized that Irish music was the first music I ever listened to and played I used to play the Tim Whistle and the Baron and um, first music I saw live and you know that's my roots and I was like oh I want to go back to this and discover it as an adult and so I did a road trip recently around Ireland or down the west coast the wild Atlantic way and started re-listening to some of these old albums that my parents I'd hear in my parents car and um yeah, Christy Moore, Live at the Point from 1984. It's on Spotify and it's such a good album. It's just, he's so, he's so charming and so funny. And it's, it's some of just like the introductions to some of his songs are like really long and he tells these stories and he's so funny and warm. And um, it's such a warm and funny album. I was like laughing out loud listening to it and then being taken back to like my childhood and driving around these like, beautiful like this beautiful scenery and the west coast of Ireland that I hadn't appreciated I think fully as a child because as a kid my friends would be going on holiday to like Turkey and Greece and I was like I want to go to the beach <laughs> and now I was like yeah. driving like along the cliffs of Myrrh and like these insane I saw the most insane sunset of my life um and there was like surfers and it's like pink and orange in this little bay. And there was literally like a wild horse like running in a field with cows. And I suddenly appreciated, I think Ireland is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And that record is gorgeous. So I recommend it. And that's the beauty. I mean, the beauty of music is right there. Like you said, it like albums really have, you know, bring back memories. Yeah, really. they're so evocative. I mean, it. there's so much that it, that, music when I listen to brings back that's really inspiring to write to because it was so much of my childhood that was just there um, and I wasn't paying I wasn't consciously paying attention it's just all in my subconscious so I've even found that writing melodies to Irish music has just come so easily and in a way it's made me understand my songwriting style and the way that I sing and write uh, melody and lyric it, it does come from that sort of traditional Irish background. I can see it now. It's so interesting to like trace your roots back, I think, musically. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you. And finally, we like to ask all our guests for some words of wisdom or advice for our audience. Oh, um, just in life, about music or anything? About anything. Oh, God. Um, well, I think it's really important to learn to love yourself and to be okay with who you are as a person and accept your true self because I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with and it's dangerous over time not to appreciate yourself because um, it means that you can get into like unhealthy relationships across the board in like love and romance, sex, the workplace, friendship. Um, you know, if you don't res have respect for yourself, it's really easy to allow other people to disrespect you and I think that we'd all be so much happier if we could learn to love ourselves you know it makes you like more loving to other people too so Perfect.